Hey you, you like Google Chrome to browse the web? Well, have you heard of other browsers? Maybe not. That's why we made this video. Here are the top five alternatives to Google Chrome. And number five is Microsoft Edge. Wait, don't leave yet. Microsoft's got a new version of Edge and it's built on Chromium. Chromium is the same web engine in Google Chrome. Now, why does that matter? It means that sites should render on the new Edge like they do in Chrome. It's kind of nuts to think about. Way back in the day, Microsoft's Internet Explorer was a newcomer against Netscape Navigator. Sites had to be coded in specific ways so they would show up properly in either browser. I remember coding for these issues back when I was tinkering with my first sites in HTML. Anyway, the new Edge has a new logo that reminds me of a Tide Pod for whatever reason. So other than those things, what makes Edge an intriguing choice? Microsoft included a tracking prevention feature by default. That's a good thing. If you're trying to organize your browsing, Edge has a collections feature. Microsoft showed a wish list as an example. Just add pages, images, or whatever to a collection. You can even export that to Excel. Here I've been making notes in a third party program like a dummy. And number four is Vivaldi. This browser is also built on Chromium. It's very customizable with plenty of themes. Lots of Chrome extensions work on it too. More importantly, there are some pretty cool sidebar tools. You get a second pane for your bookmarks, an option for notes, history, and even the ability to add a second site in a panel. Let's say you always want Twitter up. You can do that. It's kind of similar to how iPads handle multitasking. Let's go to the crazier tools. Tabs can be grouped. Then you have the option to tile them. So if you wanted to see a bunch of sites up at one time, you could do that. This could be very useful for comparison shopping. No need to have multiple windows open. Vivaldi can just tile them. It's a very cool power feature. If you set up an account with Vivaldi, you can even sync up your passwords. Now Vivaldi claims that it does not track or store any of your data. Number three is good old Opera. Gather around, children. This is the browser that originated speed dial, pop-up blocking, and even tabbed browsing. The modern version of Opera includes messaging tools on the left. You can have either Facebook Messenger or WhatsApp over there. There's also the My Flow feature. This is the place where you can connect the Opera Touch mobile browser to your desktop. There's no login necessary. On top of that, you've got a built-in ad blocker and the ability to block trackers. Opera even has a free VPN. That means third parties should have a more difficult time tracking you. Is it fast? Not really. Is it free? Yes. Let's go to number two, and that is Firefox, also known as everyone's old favorite before Chrome came along. After years and years of bloat, Firefox is back to being lean, trim, and ready to go. Firefox still has tons of add-ons, so you can customize the heck out of it. There's the ability to watch videos while you browse with picture in picture. It works with lots of sites, including that CNET one. There's a pretty cool privacy section. If you click the shield to the left of the web address, you can see a privacy report. There, you will see what trackers have been blocked, if any. You can also sign up for data breach alerts. That report will also be emailed to you if you want. And the number one alternative to Chrome is the Brave browser. Why is this? By default, it blocks trackers, ads, and cookies that monitor your activity. If you are okay with viewing what Brave calls privacy-respecting ads, you will earn Brave rewards. The browser can set up a crypto wallet and will pay you for what ads it does display. As a user, you can choose to automatically contribute to content creators if you want. There's also the ability to tip content creators in the rewards panel. This is a very different approach to being online. If a site looks all crazy, you have the option to block fewer things. Just click the lion icon and fiddle with the settings until the site looks right. Did I mention that Brave is fast, like really fast? Brave claims some pages load up to six times faster. In a demo, they show how fast some sites called CNET.com loads. In Brave, it's around five seconds. Chrome, over 13. How about CNN? Brave loads it in under four seconds, while Chrome takes over 13 seconds. How about private browsing mode? It's got a huge one. If you want, you can open a private window with the Tor network. That means your data is bouncing between a chain of three different computers in the volunteer Tor network. Your real IP address is hidden. The trade-off for that level of privacy is speed. If you want to know more about Tor, I'll leave a link somewhere. While you're browsing, check this video out about streaming services. They all want your money. Find out which are really worth it. 
Thankfully, all of these browsers I mentioned are free. Try them all out. Nothing says that you have to use just one of them. Let me know which one is your favorite on Twitter. I'm Matt Ayaz, and I'll see you online.